Good morning, Lisa. Um, as a resident of the CBD, quite close to Parliament, uh, I've witnessed all the pro-Palestinian protests that have gone on for a while now in their thousand. And quite honestly, I think it's time that the Western Cape government put a temporary ban on these protests now because they've become something else. Uh, we all understand the dreadful circumstances of this war and we all would like it to end peacefully, however that may seem. But that's my only wish now, is that they put a stop to these protests for a while. Denise, CBD. I disagree with you, Denise. Uh, there should not be any ban that on any protest that is not violent, that is not insightful. And just because you don't necessarily like the message does not mean that it should be banned. Uh, Tracy, good morning. How are you? Hi. Hi. Hello. I'm listening. What's on your mind? Oh, hi. Hi, Lester. We just need to get one thing very, very, very clear. I was at the protest on Saturday and it was absolutely beautiful to see Capetonians come in droves to support Palestine. Hundreds of Jews, hundreds of Christians, hundreds of Muslims, actually not hundreds, thousands. And what people need to realize that yesterday's protest was not a protest for for um, against Jews. And there's this whole thing of anti-Semitism happening as well. It was a protest for Zionists, and Zionism is based around the concepts of racism and white supremacy. And yesterday's protest was met with caspers, with rubber bullets, with tear gas, with water, water guns, with lots of police, with shields. None of those people were at yesterday's protest. And we as Capetonians needed to do what we did in the 90s, was to shut apartheid down mm. and shut racism down. Because that is actually what it's about. Uh, Tracy, we may have a, a very principled and, and, and moral outrage to the ideology of, of Zionism. But Zionism is not declared under any South African ruling as any form of hateful or insightful group. We may have our deep moral outrage, but in terms of a legal response, anyone who wants to uh, endorse an ideology of Zionism is have a protest in support of Israel, a Zionist state, in terms of South African law, they have very much their right to do so, Tracy. And I was also called a terrorist for wearing a Palestinian kefir. Mm -hmm. So we also have that, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and this is an on because historically, this has been going on. I watched the movie called Made in Gaza on Saturday and these were interviews for, they interviewed children, and there were bombs everywhere. Children were walking around, picking up plastic bottles to collect for, for money to eat. Um, fishermen weren't allowed to, um, were too scared to go to sea to catch fish because the Israelis were bombing their boats. And this was in... 2014, and my 15-year-old 15, my 15 daughter watched this, mm. and she said, Mommy, I was, all I was thinking of was, I wonder how many of those children are actually alive mm. today. Tracy Nkope, appreciate your call. Uh, A.H. in Mowbray, good morning. Yeah, good morning to you, Lester. Uh, thanks for good programs. I'm always listening to your programs. I agree 100% with Tracy, the way it was handled yesterday, the marching or the demonstration in Seat Point was, was badly handled, very, very badly handled. How was it, it reminded, badly handled? It reminded me of the days of the apartheid, mm. of all the cops that was there, the, the water cannons that was used on the demonstrations there. I don't think that, that was the right way to handle it. I, I watched and I was not there, but... I was watching from about, what, one o'clock to four o'clock. I was watching two live streams 
as well as the 24-hour news channels that were that were broadcasting and 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 I and I happened upon the conversation I don't know who the who was the public order police commander there talking to Mandla Mandela who somewhat took a leadership role I don't know if yesterday's counter protest was organized or whether it was somewhat people who are just wanting to find themselves there I do not know but I did happen upon the conversation between the public order police command and, and Mandla Mandela and the, it was a very sobering but also a very level-headed conversation the public order police commander says we act, we appreciate people's right to protest we appreciate the way people feel about this issue but he did say that people were feeling threatened and that people were encroaching on a police line and therefore they had to act. I don't know if that was the right approach because we know that stun grenades can be triggering. It does not necessarily lower the tension. But in terms of the verbal dialogue between Manla Mandela and the poli- and the public order police command, I thought it was fairly level-headed, A.H.? Eh, well, I, th- I think it was provoked. I honestly think it was, it was provoked, definitely. The way I was watching, I wasn't, Present day, I was watching TV and seeing everything there, but I think it was definitely provoked. Provoked by who? By the police. Mm. So, so you're saying police did not do enough to de-escalate the situation? They never did enough to de-escalate. Okay, so I think they, prov- they provoked the crowd there. I can appreciate that comment. Ah, thanks so much. Okay. Good morning, Lester. Um, I've been to the protest on Saturday as well with my entire family. We were about 10, 12 people, kids as well. And I can tell you it was one of the most beautiful experiences ever. And I'm glad my child, my kid and the children could experience that atmosphere. It was peaceful. It was amazing. Thank you. Hi, Lester. No, I have to agree with one of the previous um, people. Um, whilst our constitution is very broad about the practice of police religions, it does come with caveats that it is mindful and respectful of the other rights of other individuals. And I second that the basis of Zionism is around a predominantly racist and supremacist um, founding. And within that, it will no longer actually be protected by our constitution. I do feel somebody should challenge that, and it is a very bit as atrocious as pre-94 South Africa's regime. I don't think that it instills goodness for human beings and a basis of a good morality. I don't think it fits. And, and yes, and until it is challenged, then you work off that, because up until now, we can't have a police service shutting down a protest simply because of what we feel. Uh, the police doesn't base the, the operations on on morals. They, they base it on the law. So if someone wants to challenge it, then they must. And up until that happens, and up until there is a ruling, up until there is on a statute or a, or a court ruling, then I feel that people should have the freedom and the space to to say and to reflect and to gather and to associate how they want to. And I would accept that on both sides of an argument. Morning, Cape Talk. I think it's time to admit that Cape Talk as a news organization is dead and buried. You are no longer objective. You are not reporting the news. You are reporting narratives. A perfect example is, of this is the Israeli-Gaza conflict. Yesterday's Seapoint promenade violence was specifically aimed at Jews and Christians who were there to pray for the return of the hostages. You do not, you are not reporting that the people that from the pro Gaza movement came there with Hamas flags and Hezbollah flags and Hamas hezbands around their neck. You can see their heads. You can see that clearly in the footage on the news that there were hundreds of Hamas flags. That was a disgusting display of Islamic supremacism or and pro-genocidal intent and yet you don't say anything about it when people try phoning to discuss that you don't do a thing you just cut them off now we know where you stand Cape Talk hey, 
Leicester, Ashley Parker here. Just my thoughts on the weekend's events. I attended the pro-Palestinian anti-genocide march in Cape Town with my family. I was very glad that I took my kids with me uh, to reinforce the message to them that activism isn't just sitting behind a cell phone screen, uh, retweeting and sharing on Instagram like you, like you just mentioned now, but that if we want to see positive change in the world, we need to uh, we need to take decisive action, and I think to that extent, uh, the march on Saturday uh, delivered our message forcefully, peacefully, and very eloquently. In terms of yesterday's uh, events, I disagree with you. In that, we all have the right to protest, but those rights are not uh, unencumbered. Like all other rights in this country, they are subject to certain uh, restrictions. We cannot allow anybody to protest in this country in support of a genocide or an ethnic cleansing in the same way that we wouldn't allow neo-Nazis to, to, to hold a demonstration in defense of the Holocaust, or we wouldn't allow uh, right-wing Afrikaner fringe groups to protest in support of the reintroduction of apartheid in, in, in South Africa. We cannot allow such protests to go unchallenged. The violence was unfortunate, but we need to leave that to the police to establish exactly what happened. But for, for, for some of your listeners to come on the radio and say that those were anti-Jewish uh, actions and that there were hundreds of Hezbollah um, and Hamas flags there is just plain wrong. That is factually incorrect uh, as evidenced by the videos and people who were there on the site. Thank I, Yeah, Sheikh, I, I, I appreciate your comments. Um, but, but Zionism isn't considered as a hate group by any South African institution, legal body, document, law, or any basis by the South African Human Rights Commission. You may be morally and you may be principled in your moral opposition to it, but there is no law. And if you want to challenge Zionism as an ideology, whether it be a form of a political conversation or an educational conversation. There have been conversations around schools in Cape Town that have Zionism as a dominant ideology. Then you must go challenge that. Then you must challenge that in the South African Human Rights Commission. You must go challenge it there. And then we start having the conversation. But simply because you dislike a flag, I don't think that is the basis to simply oppose it and to shut it down. Simply you just don't like what people are saying on their side of the road. You simply want to shut it down because you don't like it. That is not within the frame of the South African expression to the freedom of speech, gathering, and association. Of course, rights have limits in South Africa. Good morning, Cape Town. I think there's a deeper conversation to be had than this Palestine and Israel. I think the currency of inequality is starting to to run out in Cape Town. Every time when moments like these arise, moments of protest, when when major issues like this comes to the fore, inequality also raises its head because we're already starting or from a point of view that the Western Cape is divided already into pockets of the have and the have not. And there's almost that segregation that happens. And when those two worlds meet up, it always ends up with protest, it always ends up with violence, it always ends up with who's right and who's wrong. And sadly, the Western Cape government has failed again miserably to manage the situation accordingly. And if this is not a finger pointing session, but I think inequality has been playing a big part in this whole process. And yes, it's not going to end there because people is now going to spiral out of control. And this war between Palestine and Israel it's got nothing to do with religion. But in South Africa, it's starting to turn to that. And that is sad. And, and that's exactly what I said at the start of the show, that global conflicts 
and the valid protests that people have are being internalized to match people's own identity. I am involved, I am absorbed, I am motivated to protest in a certain way for a particular cause because I am particularly offended because I prescribe to a certain identity. And then there have been many ways where people oh, I think doing whatever their cause is a disservice by speaking to what they are experiencing in South Africa. A lot of the opposition to police action in Seapoint yesterday was because people feel that they are policed, particularly spatially in the city of Cape Town. The perception that police are deployed to a particular area to protect a particular group. That's a very valid perception by many many South Africans. And that is how a global geopolitical situation speaks into the very real South African scenario. People who feel that they've maybe been ignored. People who feel that there is a history of tropes and oppression against their particular identity and therefore using a particular platform to voice their concern. And it is very much a South African phenomenon. Uh, good morning, John. You were in C Point yesterday? Yes, I was. I was there from about 12, 12 o'clock, so re relatively earlier. Uh, and I uh, witnessed uh, everything that went, that went down. Um, I just wanted to correct one thing that, that you read out a bit earlier, which is the statement uh, that was made. Um, there was no conflict or no protest against uh, one side or another side. There wasn't one side. There wasn't more than 10 of us, maybe 15 at the max at one point, um, with the visual supposedly st supposed to start at 2.30. So I was there at 12. By that point, there was already a, a major scene. By 1 o'clock, the flashbangs were going off. Um, and by that point, the, everybody that was supposed to come was informed not to come. Mm. So this wasn't even a game. It wasn't one side against another side. It was one side against the police. Essentially, the other side never arrived. Um, I was unfortunately one of the few 10 to 15 people that was surrounded 360 degrees um, and had to find an escape route at some point because we couldn't get out. So the cordon that divided pro-Israeli, the, the pro-Israeli prayer group and pro-Israeli uh, and pro-Palestinian uh, protesters, you were say, you were there not to divide a group, but to protect you and, you say, the 15 people who were there. Well, there was about 15 of us at that point. Um, initially, when it started off, there was only one line of uh, counter-protesters, if that's what you want to call it. Mm. Um, by uh, Look, we had three flags on our side. They were all... Um, we were attacked at that point. Those flags were grabbed from us. So that, that took all of 30 seconds. Um, and that's pretty much when, uh, so when things kicked off. I mean, there was three flags against, you know, probably 300 at that stage, if not more. But then what followed from there onwards was that as more and more um, pro-Palestinian uh, supporters arrived, um, they ended up creating a circle 360 degrees around us. The police were uh, obviously around that circle. Um, and that was at the point roughly where the police took a decision to call off the uh, vigil on the basis that it was already out of control, even though nothing had happened yet. In other words, the vigil hadn't started, nobody had arrived. Um, the 15 people that were there were part of the setup, and um, uh, Pastor and his wife, a few of us that had arrived early um, just to kind of help set up and see what was going on. Um, so there wasn't even the opportunity to sort of say there was one against the other. There was just one side. Good morning, May. Uh, good morning, Lester. I just wanted to confirm that your interview with the gentleman who's just been on... It wasn't the an interview. He was, called in. It was unsure. Well, he, called, he decided he to pick up his in. phone and call in. Yeah, he did indeed. It wasn't a pers perspective. That is factual. That is exactly what happened on the beachfront. Uh, the 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 um, the gathering was hijacked. Uh, it was never it never took place. The people who wanted to gather had never arrived. 
uh, they were messaged not to come because there would be trouble. And what he related to you is factual. That's all I wanted you to know. That's all you wanted to let... Okay, appreciate Pardon? it. May, thank you so much. May is in C point. Uh, but Abdiya, you say you were also there yesterday. You have a different yes. perspective. Yes, good morning, Lester. Quite a few um, interesting comments coming through from, I'd say, the other side. Uh, firstly, number one, I think people are forgetting that this land comes from the state of apartheid. Number two, I think they are forgetting that this people, when you look at this illegal occupation in Palestine, that people are forgetting that we know what apartheid looks like. We know the struggle. We know the occupation. Although it's 20 times worse over there, we know what the struggle is. So the fact that people can stand there and raise a flag in support of genocide and the ethnic cleansing of people is disgusting. It's sad, it's disturbing, and you actually think people who suffered apartheid are going to stand and watch it? 39 babies on Saturday died in an ICU because the hospital electricity was cut off. Yesterday, a whole ICU of people died because there was no electricity. And you want to stand with that flag. And and just listen to these comments of 15 people jumped one guy. I've got a video on my phone. The police were barricading Palestinian supporters and the whole five Israeli supporters who had the events over the five, not 15, I don't know where, where the 12, 13 people came from. And this one guy takes his flag and he walks right up to a crowd of about 200 people. That is the fact. The woman who called in now before me, that was not factual. And that is what the Zionists do. They lie. They lie in the media. They lie to the people. They lie about events, situations. That is what Zionists do. They lie. Uh, so, all so, the time. so, how many people do you say were there? Of the, of the, how of many the people were there? Let's let's start there. So, uh, how many? No, no, no. Of of, of 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 it was a a a prayer group. The prayer group. There were five people. There were five people. There were five whole people. Could could you could you appreciate that five people, as you say, would feel intimidated by a group of I don't know how many were there. I saw a lot of people at sea point with Palestinian flats. Could you appreciate how there could be a a feeling of intimidation on Lister, Seapoint? I think Lister, I think if you go out publicly and support apartheid and a genocide of people, you should feel intimidated. You should feel intimidated. Mm. You don't support apartheid and the ethnic cleansing of people. You don't support that. Yeah, I'm going to have to leave it there. I appreciate your call.